Damn, it's happy hour. Special shout out goes to Scoop Gray, Gray Whitaker, who single handedly saved the happy hour. Because guess what happened for the very first time, Justin Robert Young? Uh, you forgot to do a happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that we had a happy hour. I got, uh, I hit that um, uh, flow state of actually getting emails done, you know, and I was just lost in the moment. Yeah. And then I'm just like, and and, and I had this idea, um, really excited about uh, that. I want to talk to you about um, after uh, we're off the air. But uh, I was I was grooving on that, sending emails, and then uh, I get you know, screw, uh, scoop gray calls. All right, my phone rings and it says it's Gray Whitaker. Uh, who I know is in Australia and who has written us saying, hey, what I love yeah. about happy hour is that it's on at seven in the morning. And so I'm like, yeah. oh, he's calling me now. And I'm like, God, what time is it? And I, and, and I say, hey, man, what time is it in Australia? And he goes, it's almost seven o'clock. And then it's like this echo. It was like, Lisa needs braces. Dental plan. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa needs braces. Dental plan. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, that's right. I should be ah! doing happy hour. <laughs> now, where oh. were you? Were you on the property? Or uh, were you I, I was luckily on the property. I was uh, I was over in the office shed. Uh, just uh, it's I, I think of it as the salt mines, you know, where it's just like, all right, time to make the donuts. If you're in, I, yeah, if, if, if you're in the shed, you're working. Yes. Yes. Like that is that is the value of the shed is, is, is that like there's not a lot of fucking around when you're in the weird murder shit. Exactly. Like like when I'm when I'm okay with with you know being pulled into fucking around, that's when I'm on I'm literally anywhere else because it's like uh oh, there you go, I'm gonna crack open the white claw because it's four o'clock. Um yeah, because uh, the studio here is oftentimes where I'll get stuff done if if I'm cool with anyone tapping me on the shoulder or or hey bossing me. But then it's just like yeah. the salt mines is just like must do the emails. Uh, doing the emails, doing the emails. Everybody's working today. Hey, man, how about uh, the fact that uh, that our little mini viral clip from Meryl Barr, uh, like the biggest thing that you notice about it is how great you sound. <laughs> oh my! Well, just that, yeah. Like it just sounds like I'm in the studio. It it, it it's. It, I guess the biggest thing that's wild about it is that it really just unlocks the fact that I have a professional rig as well, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It doesn't matter how much, like when I'm recording straight to my stuff, it sounds great, right? Because I got a good mic, I got a good mixer, you know, we have a good connection. Uh, you have every everything you need, all the ingredients. But whenever we were calling in on Skype, there was always going to be some amount of Skype crunchiness to it. That it's like, it's going to be better than a phone, and if you listen to it long enough because of the quality, you'll get used to it. But yeah, I was listening to that clip and I'm like, oh my God, like yeah. that opal. Let, let me Dig see if <laughs> that opal. <laughs> oh my opal. Uh, here oh we go. Let's... My opal. I it just... puts the fucking oh. O in opal. <laughs> the the part that just uh, uh, slays me is your response coming in, not knowing what's going on. Like there's just enough chatter about like, oh, we're getting ready to do a thing, and and it's not. Yeah. It's clear that something's gone wrong. But like your response just kills me here. I'm gonna uh, play. I cannot hear you guys You're over opal. Anything. No, I don't think there's power to this. If you can hear me. Oh God, Jesus fuck. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh no. I don't know what I've done, but I feel like I've done something terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I could not get it up. I could not get it up. Which, by the way, by the way, I didn't assume in my head, I didn't think that I had caused you to fall down. I assumed it was a video thing, or sorry, an audio thing, a volume thing. But uh, I thought because it, you hear the timing on it, I'm saying. Hey, can you hear me? And I thought maybe my stuff was just turned way up in right. your ears. <laughs> but what's and so I was just yelling into your ears, and that's why you fell down. Well, and 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 uh, I think that's what makes me love your tone of voice even more. It's one of those things where it's like, oh, oh dear, what whatever shall yeah. we do? <laughs> you know, everybody run. Just oh, oh no, oh no. I don't know what I've done, but I feel like I've done something terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh god but by the oh. way at that point i don't think anybody could hear me could you hear me uh, uh uh well not by the time i fell down it wasn't even you yeah. it was it was one of those no, no no it was it was the board right right the the little mixer yeah. uh, because now eventually that monitor setup was everyone will have their own little knob on there right but each of those units yeah. you have to buy separately and, and they're going to arrive like tomorrow 
Uh, but in the meantime, Bryce had hooked it up to the little mixer. And so he's like, there's only one knob you need to worry about. It's this one. And uh, so uh, I heard nothing, turned it up, turned it up, turned it up, and then saw that there were no lights and then went to handle it, thinking like maybe it's a power thing. Where's the power button? And in handling it, the power connected and just yeah. everything, just the, the slightest yeah, room, anything. My own scream. That was the worst part. Was it was it was deafening, deafening, and then I screamed, and then my scream made it even more deafening. Oh, because you were now getting all the, and you were literally screaming. Into I was a literally torturing myself. It, yeah, <laughs> which made it even worse. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, dude. It, it is. It is just another level to have this kind of connection. Like it. It. It, it truly is. Uh. You know, what, what, one of your favorite sayings is, you know, the, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. Yes. And that's, that's kind of the feeling that I have with this Opal thing. It's like, man, uh, uh, it, even when we weren't making money on this, <laughs> there certainly would have been an argument to be like, no, buy this immediately. In fact, I would make the argument for anybody that is making any kind of money on this sort of stuff that is now doing things zoom or uh, a skype style like yeah if you can get your hands on it and, and by and large because this is like just a sea hair above prosumer yep it's like at like the bottom level of pro i mean it's uh, different and and it, you may think like to the casual ear when you're just hearing skype you might think yeah sounds fine sounds great it's, it sounds like you're there and then uh on another program you're like You'll never note. You'll never notice it. it. It's it's like um, uh, if you have blue, green, and green, but you separate it with a black line in between the two, which is which is you have a podcast over here and a podcast over there. You you like that's the sound that Night Attack makes. That's the sound that this radio program makes. But when yeah. you remove that black line and when you see the two side by side, you're just like, good God, what garbage have I been tolerating? And that's the thing is you realize that there are radio shows that are done with hosts in different studios, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, that this is a thing that is done all the time. And this is the tech that they, I mean, they have a more complex version of it, right? right. Like an ISDN line is basically just a fancier, fully dedicated version of what we have now. But Outside like of the internet, this is just, this is just a little ISDN pipeline over the internet. Exactly. And it's holy shit. <laughs> well, but keep in mind, keep in mind, it wasn't even on the table for us to play with this until we got this ridiculous board, the Death Star board that, that Bryce is in love oh, with. Oh, yeah. Like, we couldn't yeah. even do the, the mix minus because we leaned into the uh, the decent enough job that Skype did. And it served us well for, for a fairly long time. But, uh, oh, no. But I mean, new we era a goddamn now. career on it. Yeah. Oh, oh. It's the crystal clear era. It's crystal Pepsi, baby. The, the benchmark of success. I sent... Uh, I'm going to say this totally out of context so it doesn't exactly sound like I'm talking about the thing that I'm talking about. But you will know exactly what I'm talking about. I okay. sent a text, and, yeah. and, and friends of the show will know what I'm talking about. I sent a text to Matt Donnelly today that consisted of only one photo of what appears to be 50-plus $1 bills with identical ah. serial numbers <laughs> and the words... Four fucking weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. Uh, have you gotten anything back from him? Yeah, no. He he said, uh, uh, you know, I followed it up with like you know a, a winky thing, and I was like, uh, no, but legit, I forgot how good those look. And he was like, they're gorgeous. Also, do you want to come on Africa Babble and, <laughs> and 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 talk and, about it? Yeah, exactly. And I'm just like, dude, if this is the excuse that we have to get me to spend any more time with you, I'm down. So. Uh, Hopefully that'll happen tomorrow night. Uh, I actually just disrupted their show literally minutes ago. Oh, right on. Uh, wh what did you uh, uh, call out the here, wrong he's method? Of... He's actually calling me oh, right now. Bring him on. Bring Matt him on. Donnelly. Perfect. Hold on. Uh, hi, Matt. You're now disrupting my podcast. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Uh, so you're you're live on the air for Night Attack Happy Hour. Yeah, yeah. I'll call you. I'll call you right back. All right, bye. Uh, so. I was like, uh, you know, just going there on my political stuff. And one, and the, one of the big stories today is that uh, the mayor of Las Vegas, Mayor Goodman, went on CNN and made like a big uh, uh, plea basically to say, hey, we're reopening Vegas. 
And in fact, <laughs> here's my scientific reason why we're the control study. If everyone dies in Vegas, then you'll know it was a bad idea to reopen. We will bring that service to the rest of the country. That's brilliant. I love this. Uh, so uh, I, I'm like, oh, great. You want to know what this sounds like to me is an excuse to bring on uh, Matt, Jacob, and Paul to PX3 because... Not only can they give an actual, uh, you know, tale of sort of exactly how interconnected everything is in Vegas. They don't have a secondary industry. All their secondary industries are all plugged into their first industry, which is tourism, right? Yeah. So there is a desire to get everything there, but of course they'd be able to talk about it funny. Uh, so I'm texting with them. I'm texting with all three of them, and and we're trying to schedule this out. And then at a certain point, Matt is just like. Hey, we're on the air for another 15 minutes. Can we figure this out when we're done? <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, I didn't realize you guys were recording. So I jumped into their chat and I'm just like, sorry guys. Oh, that's funny. Uh, so that's an interesting question. A bunch of people are, are saying like, yeah, it's a brilliant idea if you want dead people. But it's like, I guess I look at it two ways. It's like, if you know it's a, number one, you know Vegas is a Petri dish. And if you are buying a ticket to Vegas, you are signing a waiver uh, and then climbing on the ramshackle tra traveling circus ride, knowing full well that those rusty nails are all over the place and that it's tended by a 17-year-old uh, who, you know, stopped going to school in eighth grade. Uh, that That is your contract when you go to Vegas. Now, the people who live in Vegas, um, they want to get the fuck out. Uh, but, uh, but, but yeah. also even every, like Vegas is not a town of natives. Vegas is a town of people who came to Vegas to live in a Petri came dish somewhere else. They yeah. came, they came and visited the Petri dish and then decided. So like they signed the contract to go and then they signed the contract to stay. Now, granted, I will say that these are very upped stakes and I don't know what it's like to live in a Petri dish that you're tol you're tolerating the smallpox and the and and the and the hepatitis C and all that stuff, and then suddenly it gets announced that they're going to run you know some new vectors through this auger. Uh, but 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 in but as far if I was let me put it this way, I hate to say it, if I was going to pick one city to make an experiment of, not a bad not a bad isolated. It's a very socially isolated city that you got to go to on purpose. You know, I, it's it's an interesting question because on one hand, no city would want to open up faster than Vegas. On the other hand, no city wants to risk their number one industry at all. And Vegas's number one industry is tourism. So it's like, all right, they can open up now. And maybe it's great, right? Maybe they're able to contact trace. Maybe it's it's a managed enough crowd that like it just it just gets it's enough grease to just get those gears rolling again. And and maybe we are on the opposite side of uh, of the 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 curve. And even if we have a spike, it's not going to be that much. And you're able to keep it out. But maybe it's not. <laughs> and maybe this becomes plague world and maybe now people don't want to go to Vegas, not for a couple months, but for a couple years. And, and that sufficiently damages Vegas because Vegas is not about old growth money. Vegas is about the money that is coming in right now. And, and that is a double-edged sword. And there is, there is a legitimate case to be made for the fact that it is a travel destination <clears throat> I can see a lot of places that are, are annoyed with, uh, look, you're a tourist, tourist destination. You're a Petri dish, and everyone's going to go to the Petri dish, get infected, and then bring it back to my town. Like, yeah. it seems to me that uh, when you're in the middle of the desert, you can set up, like, I mean, I, I wouldn't even, look, you're talking to a hardcore anarcho-capitalist libertarian, and yet, with a straight face, I could say, I would be okay with the local township making a Vegas visa that includes... You have to give us this info, you have, or, you, or you have to have this medical checkout on your way in, on the way out. And if you pass the medical screening and we know the things, and uh, then, then, then enjoy, enjoy the rusty nail uh, traveling circus. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's the thing, though, is that I don't think that the double down is going to be doing a temperature checking at the door, right? And that's, that's even before you realize yeah, that well, I guess I'm temperature thinking of, like, checking at the airport or whatever. Well, sure. I mean, uh, and maybe, maybe that's the case. Maybe they try to screen people on the way in and, and figure that out there. But uh, it's, it's hard uh, uh, because, you know, 
it, it is a town dependent on dumb people coming in. That's kind of their industry, <laughs> right? like, And that's not even an exaggeration. People that think a 98% payout is a good thing. You know, that's uh, those yeah. are how you run the town. Yeah. Uh, exactly. This is the this is the business that they're that they're running. Now, I would be lying if I told you that I was not very excited to go to Vegas as soon as it's open for one reason and one reason only. To I catch, want to just roll up to wait to go, wait what? Oh, I was gonna say to catch a disease. Or... No, I want to go roll up to Caesar's Palace and say, hey. Give me the most ballin' ass sweet you can because I have two hundred dollars and I know that you are going to fill that for something. So uh I'll tell you what, Howard Hughes went to Vegas so he could socially isolate <laughs> and be a germaphobe. There are plenty of ways that Vegas, yes, Vegas is about uh uh entertainment, but if you're not running shows and you're pretty much just sitting there at uh uh you know uh, in in your your sweets hot tub you know smoking cigars you could do worse yeah. like that there is there are few places that uh i can get to for very very cheap right now for which i could just get a balling ass hotel room and not talk to anybody for uh for 72 hours i mean i guess also i mean there are people who are uh understandably reacting horrified to the decision or whatever, but, but this is not unprecedented. We have an entire country of Vegas. Sweden is the Las Vegas of the world where they, 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 you want to talk about rolling the dice. They're saying, you know, they're saying, look, if you're old, stay inside. If you're sick, sticks or six, stay home. And in fact, they actually, uh, but, but they have no restrictions on anything. On and, bars or restaurants. Yeah. Right. And as a matter of fact, like the guy who runs the nightclub, <laughs> what he does, one of the nightclubs there is if he notices people getting too frisky and too close and starting to dance, he, uh, he starts playing shitty music <laughs> to get them to separate and go back to their like undanceable. He, he, he's found that ABBA is extremely good at getting crowds to, to, to disperse to disperse yeah <laughs> uh and so but- I, jo- I i i i half jokingly mostly jokingly unless <clears throat> you told me i could uh pitch to ashley like hey you know it's like it's only like 6k for me to go business class to stockholm i just catch the rona you know chill out for a couple weeks I'm sure they got like socialized healthcare out there so if shit really goes ass over tea kettles i can figure it out uh and then I come back. I got uh, immunity, and uh, it's party time. I'm just I'm good to go. That that is going to be, the, and that's the part that it's easy to focus on the scary part right away. But there's a reason they're taking that gamble because it may be yes right now. So if you look at Sweden and Norway, they're demographically identical. Their language is the same language. I'm sorry, come at me, Norway and Sweden. Okay, <laughs> the only thing separating your languages is a couple of spellings and a border. Uh, but the but. Uh, but the number of deaths in Sweden is currently like 10 times as much or even more. Like it's, it's a yeah. lot, but the reason they're taking this gamble is because if you have herd immunity, if, if the majority of the people already got it and are over it, then you get the equivalent of permanent social distancing. So like right now, if, if we're all standing 12 feet apart here in the United States in Sweden, they could fill those 12 feet between every other people with five more people who are immune. And uh, and so what you'll want to watch is the numbers in Sweden to see if if they peak first and then begin to decline first, then that's a strong indicator that they're uh, that that they made. Uh, I, I don't want to say a good gamble, but but I mean eventually, uh, this. Well, I mean th- th- this is not a you know it, it's not a a, a a hard bargain to understand. If you can swallow the deaths, then you get herd immunity. But the problem for politicians are, are you going to be the one that gets face down when somebody's like, my grandma died because right. you told her to? Right. Right. Also, uh, and in, that's hard. Uh, well, in, in the chat, <clears throat> there's an all caps. There's no proof of herd immunity for COVID. Um, uh, yes, that's why I said it's a gamble. But if it's a gamble that pays off, then I mean, look, they, they're, they're the Las Vegas of the world. They're, they're taking that gamble. That, and plus, also, there I, I heard that um, that there was a big spike uh, from the chat. Somebody was saying there's a big spike in deaths in in uh, uh, Massachusetts, uh, but also oh, I guess we did. Did we talk about the news that, that there's like tw- forty times more infected than than any numbers yeah, indicate? Yeah, well, that's that's a that's a big question. Like, there's been a couple studies now 
that have projected anywhere between 40 to 85 times the infected in the regions that they were done. And so far it was LA and Santa Clara County, but there's a lot of pushback on their methodology and, you know, partially it's, it's, uh, there's reason for skepticism because if it's at the low end, like 10% of America already has it. Uh, if it's at the high end, it's like 30% of America that already has it. So, uh, uh, that would, that would be a big number. It would be better if that was the case. And we only had the mortality that we have right now. Um, it, it would but, certainly be better the, the, in terms of how scared we had to be of the virus, but it would be, um, I, I don't want to say worse. It, it would be a strong indicator that it's even more important that we socially distance if, if fully one third of us are infected or whatever. Well, yeah, or, or have had it. That's that's the key. Like, like you know, might not be that might be done, right? We might have already done it, and and there might just be a large portion of humanity that gets it and never really even knows it. You know, maybe feels a little bit bad for a little bit of time, and then that's it. But not enough that they would even think that they were sick. That I mean, who knows? Like the the, the problem with all this is that we have no clue. We have no idea whether or not any of this. Uh, uh, is is where it, it's ultimately going to shake out to be from a numbers perspective because we're still getting numbers. I mean, I know that this feels like six months, but we've only been dealing with this for two. I mean, hell, it was only a month and a half ago that I, because I didn't want to upset my mother, canceled my trip to Florida, <laughs> you know? Right. And because uh, uh, I was going to cover the, the, the Florida election. So... You know, it's only been two and a half months since uh, I was in South Carolina. Uh, it, it, it's it's nuts that, to think about it, but we're really only when you think about that from a scientific perspective, uh, that's barely enough time to observe something, let mm -hmm. alone uh, enough time to really like do any kind of you know peer reviewed study. Are on you? It. Uh, we're just getting to good data. Have you gotten to the point yet where you started poking around online to find out if you can get your hands on one of them tests? on any of them yet or or is it too like like no it's let let the people who are in danger or whatever like at what point do you and i say let me let me roll up on i mean i could buy one when nobody's looking and just give a little find a see no i don't want i don't want the the test we have now what i want is the antibody test that's that's yeah. that's the one that's really going to be worth it uh and those are just rolling out so uh, uh, right now, no, Brian, of course. We need to make sure that all these tests go exactly where they need to go. But as soon as these antibody tests are floating around on eBay, then we'll see exactly how much I'm able to hold off my trigger finger. Uh, yeah, uh, Whiskey Wolf is pointing out that you could get the uh, a non-FDA approved one. And uh, which, which, man, I, I, that's, that's a black abyss I don't want to look into because from what I hear, it was a real... Uh, that's that's gonna get me uh, all uh, libertarian triggered <laughs> if I if I look too hard at it because you have the FDA that decides no nobody can do a test except for the CDC and I'm like well that seems like a bad idea from a government entity and then the CDC we made a test whoops let's recall it because we screwed it up also we're the only people allowed to make a test da -da 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 -da, government <laughs> you know? well I mean. In, in in your perspective, then you would be happy by the fact that they part of that colossal CDC fuck up early uh, led to a lot of the red tape being cut for the private labs to develop tests. And and that's part of the reason why we have so many private labs that are involved in the testing now is because they got involved fairly quickly leading into it. And, you know, it's it's a. Uh, it's it's hard. It, 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 it's just a really hard thing to kind of wrap your head around. And, uh, you know, all I want to know is, like, how cheap can I get a suite with a hot tub where I could smoke cigars in it in Vegas? Like, I'm just I'm just kind of asking that question. Like, that's really like if I could get some kind of private area, like, I, I really don't even want to go gamble. So, uh, God, uh, this is the. Uh, let me give you a hint on what I was grooving on on my emails out in the shack, furiously yeah. reaching out to contacts I've not spoken to in a long time. Uh, uh, imagine if 
science-based reality TV was a hotel. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you have the thought, oh, you probably had a bunch of bookings for people <laughs> to occupy a lot of slots coming up this fall. Do you still have it? Is everybody still going to show up? Do they, uh, none of them, did you have any cancellations? Did you have any no-shows? Did you have any, I mean, uh -oh. Uh, I, like, do you happen to have an open suite for, I don't know, a full season's worth of... Oh, did I lose you? Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. You, yeah, you're there now. Yeah, sorry, you dropped out. Oh, that's interesting. Hopefully, I, what I was saying is that uh, imagine science-based reality television was a hotel, and I'm calling hotels now asking, have you had anyone, you know, a, like a full season of things cancel on you? Like, they couldn't show up, they couldn't provide, you know, because... Yeah, what if what if what if I was able to provide just like a full season of fully developed programming uh, by the fall? <laughs> An unheard of thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, th there's there's gonna be a, a a lot of questions. There's gonna be a lot of questions on on exactly what's uh what's what's available because uh you know deadline uh hollywood had a big thing about how a lot of these cuts that were thought to be furloughs are now becoming permanent um you know there's uh it's it's nuts i mean uh, uh, everything's fucking everything's everything's crazy the um uh i played ping pong for over 2 hours today i played thir okay. 34 games Against Corey. Uh -huh. Corey's like, I, I think in high school, he was an all state football, uh, basketball person. So he, is, okay. he sports and I don't sport. Uh, but so he is sports. He is sports. I don't sports. But, uh, but I held up. It was, uh, yeah, I, I, I won 30, 13 games and he won 21 games. So 13 21 was respectable against somebody who sports and knows how to do spins and all that crazy ping pong stuff. But it was crazy because by yeah. the time it was over, I had the thought, man, I really played hooky two, two plus hours of just goofing out playing ping pong. And then I had the thought, if I do this every single day, I will lose five pounds in two weeks. <laughs> and so and then all of a sudden I was like, <laughs> I mean, can I, can I justify, like, this is just my job <laughs> is to go and play ping pong with Corey every day? Oh, my God. The mind of Brian Brushwood is just such a, such a <laughs> weird Rube Goldberg of, of rationalizations. It, it is just, Accurate. it is its own, its own bizarre, <laughs> bizarre uh, training ground. Yeah, 100% accurate. 100% accurate. <laughs> um. Yeah, you know, I I actually got stuff done early today. I got the podcast done early, the politics one, and then uh, went for a little bit of a run. I'm gonna try and get off to the post office to mail some shit off today. It's a pretty pretty productive day. Do they, I, like, uh, I like my 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 productive Wednesdays. It's it's a cool move. Is uh so Uber and Lyft still things? You just call them up yep. and you get in the car right next to a person. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously they are down, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's funny. I actually, I wind up talking to people. I'm I'm friends with people who work at both companies. And uh, let's just say the one that didn't embrace food delivery is fucking terrified. And the other <laughs> is just mildly scared. <laughs> uh, so... The uh, uh and, and you don't have any uh, uh, like do you do you do you get in trouble for going out or do you, or do you just walk? Are you able to walk everywhere? Um yeah, so we me and Ash will do a little walk in the morning, like we'll like get right up and then do a little walk, and, and we've kind of tried to mix in a little like one mile run, uh, you know every every once in a while, and then I've tried to do like three and a half mile uh like interval running uh on monday wednesday friday just started that over the weekend and then uh yeah uh, uh you know i i was thinking about trying to go shopping today uh, uh and going to the post office but that this will be like a very a very out of the apartment day compared to my normal life which is like we go on our little morning thing and then we stay in the house for the rest of the day so, uh, any new episodes of that ESPN thing you were talking about? No, Sundays. 
You got to you got to you got to catch up so you can be with the be with the, the the crowd that watches it all together on Sunday nights. I I I will I think I will do this and I was all fired up and I was about to listen to it but then um I heard uh, I think it was Nick Gillespie saying that he did watch it and it is good but ultimately it left left the same sour taste in his mouth as what, like some Hillary Clinton documentary because he couldn't shake knowing that this only exists because Michael Jordan approved of the final cut and he had that power. So however slightly nutty it ever feels, that is all that is all with the subject's permission and so it's not truly whatever. So, okay. Uh uh that's actually a really interesting comparison. Here's where I would say that it differs only based on interviews with the director and the producer. Uh the biggest things you want to know from a Michael Jordan documentary are how big of an asshole were you? Uh, did you secretly get told by the NBA that you had to quit the league because you were busted gambling and you might have been gambling on games and that's why you went to play baseball? Uh, seriously, did you fucking bully and punch your teammates because you're a major dickhead? Uh, and And then, I don't know, like, Give us some fun stories about Dennis Rodman. That's really what what you would want to know about Michael Jordan. Uh, and you feel like those are all going to be delivered. According to the director and according to the producer, these are all things that are talked about and other people who have seen it have made that clear. So I trust that it is. Now, similarly, if there were a Hillary Clinton documentary where it was like, no, I really want to know how you dealt with uh, uh, Paula Jones, how you dealt with Jennifer Flowers. Uh, you know, the 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 fact that like you've uh, changed accents four times, right? Like, I, I I want to know all that. If she would actually address that, even if she had final cut on it, I'm fine. The problem with the Hillary Clinton stuff is just that like they they are so polished on let's just not talk about it, then. Like then that's fine. Like I would, I would, uh, I would rather her. I want to get full battle stations down, Hillary, that I've read about in books. Like where where she is cold and calculated, but has a keen political instinct. Like I, I want that Hillary, and we just never get it because she wants to give us nice Hillary. And even in the first two episodes of the Jordan documentary, you you see some of the like the the justifications of. Yeah, this is why I was an asshole. And do I realize I was an asshole? Yeah, I guess. But the rings, baby. <laughs> so uh, I I hesitate to confess, this is the first time I've ever heard about the four different accents thing. Oh, my God, really? Yeah, like, is there a YouTube video I should look up? <laughs> yeah, baby. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Uh, that's, Hillary. that's the sound over the opal. I am able to hear. <laughs> uh, Hillary Clinton, Arkansas accent. There was a YouTube video that was like very apologetic for it, but does kind of go through each of her accents. Uh, oh, here, so here there's a Bloomberg video from five years ago. Hillary Clinton's accent evolution. Um, yeah, okay, that, 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 that's the link I just put in the... Uh... We're talking about accents. Everyone has one, even if you don't think you do, and some of us have more than one, like Hillary Clinton. It was really silly. I'm glad nobody was around. Uh, and, uh... Her accents have fluctuated a lot. The road to being somebody in this society <laughs> starts with education. <laughs> yes, that's Hillary in 1983. <laughs> it's hard to tell whether she's pandering to her audience or just mimicking the people around her. That's not unusual. And lots of other politicians have done the same thing. But with Hillary, we have three decades right, of multi-regional public right life to Okay, hold through. on. Yep. Because that's one of those things that I know for conservatives drives them nuts, that it's like, all right, look, you're on to something. She's changed her accents a bunch of times. Like, you don't need to do the like, well, you know, it happens to a lot of people and a lot of politicians do it. We're not going to mention them. But also, here's a bunch of Hillary accents. Just go. Just do the thing. You've got, you're on to something interesting. You don't need to gild it. Let's go back to that 1983 clip. Starts 
with education, education. Even though she's from Illinois, she did marry a guy from Arkansas. So it's not unreasonable that that would affect her speech. That inland southern accent, though, it starts to fade just four years later. It is difficult to draw the lines between personal privacy, family privacy. But I think as a society, we've had more than enough examples. There's a twang, but it's on its way. She starts adding era and ums. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I era, have already talked with this accent. Oh. The weird thing is that that accent returns in 1992 when Bill Clinton is running for president. You know, they've just been minding their own business and they got hit by a meteor. You know, I'm not sitting meteor. here some little woman standing by my man like Tammy Wynette. Every time she called distraught saying her life was going to be ruined, ruined, ruined. But through the 90s, Hillary <laughs> discards her draw. I think that is exactly what... Oh my God, I love... I love... The, uh, the the patina of, of legitimacy uh, le legitimate news when this might as well be just a, a, a YouTube hate watch video. <laughs> it's Basically. From, from Bloomberg. There it goes. Think so? Right there in the middle on the top. <laughs> Good. Looks great, Martha. Side note, there are several Martha Stewart White House specials from the 90s and all of them are amazing. Anyway, by the middle of the decade, the Illinois native starts to sound a touch Midwestern. Questions come up and we'll just keep doing our best to answer them and hopefully it'll end at some point. I think that's only natural. By the natural. time she ran for Senate in 2000, Hillary Clinton, the Chicagoan by way of Arkansas and Washington, D.C., had to appeal to New Yorkers. When I started this campaign, I'm not sure I knew quite what to expect. Lifting up our children with better education. 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 I hope you'll give me that chance. Was that a hint of the Northeast? Long-term care. Do I detect the subtle long-term care? So there's no strong accent here. But maybe the absence of an accent is in itself an accent. Let's skip ahead to 2007. You know, I happen to think that it is just totally off base. It's, uh, you know, so far out, it's hard to even understand and take seriously. But what people are talking to me about is not that. I got to tell you. The chop and the G's at the ends of the gerunds, we're almost past the heartland into Sarah Palin territory. Seriously, though, it does sound like Hillary Clinton gets ever so slightly folksier when she's running a presidential campaign. That Charlotte had, whether they're living in rural Iowa or inner city New York or anywhere else. Obviously, she isn't the first person to modify an accent for an audience. Walk on, Jamaica. Anybody here from Guyana? Me and my mates took the tube home from the pub because we were bloody knackered. So Hillary's in good company. Ain't nothing hey, wrong with pause that. It. Pause it. I love it. Those are the examples that they give. Is it's like a politician at a you know Obama in Jamaica. Yeah, that, right? that so seemed like saying a, a very wrong pop there. Yeah, and then it's Anthony Weiner at a a pride parade of some sort where yeah he's hamming it up but that's more like look at me i'm the fish out of water it's like the rapping granny right it's right. like it's funny because it's out of there and then it's Nicki minaj doing a bit on a talk show where it's like hey read a thing in, a, in an english accent uh so i was thinking about this because i we had a we had a friend who moved to england uh, she was from texas from san antonio and yeah. then she came back one year later with a full on English accent. And yeah. uh and it was like, all right. And she was like, well, I don't even notice or whatever. And then uh and then now it's a New Zealand accent. Now here's the thing though. I yeah held that it I would probably in England, I would probably be afraid of trying to blend in with the locals. Uh and instead I would lean into my southeast texan twang although i was born i was born on the west coast grew up mostly around houston and a yeah. little time in colorado and overseas so there's not a lot but 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 you've you've heard me lean into it from time to time yeah. if i was in some place like new zealand god just it's so fun to hear them talk i don't know that i could resist i want to be able <laughs> i want to practice like imagine if you had permission to just practice a New, e New Zealand accent all the time, and the only punishment is that you were accepted as a local. Like, why would you not do that? I See, that's the thing. I would, my desire to be noticed would be so much that I would 
always lean into being the American guy. Like I would want to be the Apu of a foreign country. Well, and, I would want to be the American Apu. I think that is true of of the vast majority of countries that I could think of. I I, I would I would hate to be the the very poor Spanish speaking person. I might I'd rather just mispronounce it and and be clearly not a local. But yeah. I just think the new in, in on Australia as well. Well, I'm not I mean, lie. I, I guess that that's the thing is that there is a difference between foreign language, right? So if you're if you're if it's foreign language, if you're if we're living in Spain, then there is a value to you figuring out the accent and understanding how people are saying it locally, because now that affects your daily life. You are able to unlock elements of your existence because you can communicate uh, uh, more efficiently. But if you're in New Zealand, if you're in England, if you're in Australia, you're in Canada, right? At a certain point, yeah, you might want to pick up, you're going to call it the tube and not the subway, right? You're going to, you, you might call it, you know, the uh, loo. Different. Yeah, you might call it the loo. Use the of WC the or whatever. But, uh, you know, in general, I don't know. Like, I, 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 I'm with you with, with, with the New Zealand accent, but I don't know if I would come back with it. I oh, feel I, like I've always leaned more into an accent. The last accent I was at in the new place that I go. I would like to believe, and I think maybe this is what everybody thinks they're able to do, is they think they're a chameleon. They could just pivot back and forth like, well, I'm back in America. Yeah. You, know, when, you know, when I'm in England, I speak, you know, the way everyone else does. And then now yeah. I'm back in America and I'm able to flip the switch. And it's like, no, he ain't. <laughs> like you got, you, got, no. you got two or three more weeks to massage that out of you, lady. Although I do think that for, for a lot of people, a strong accent is a point of shame. Maybe not shame is a bad word, but they <laughs> want to change it. Like my, my, mom, my mom had a thick New York accent and she beat it out of herself when she was uh when she was like in high school because she didn't want to get made fun of as like the girl from New York so she I learned to speak was without that, that I was I was that way both when we moved I mean even when I was a kid and maybe it was because like I was 5 years old and my mom and dad made a bit of it because they were moving from California to Houston. So it was a big deal, part of the oil boom. And so I remember our yeah. Christmas card was us wearing uh, cowboy hats and, and uh, holding cinnamon sticks as if they're stogies or whatever. And yeah. so I think there was a lot of talk about like, well, now we're Texans, y'all, you know, like just really try yeah. to. And so I think I was like, oh, Christ, is that what's going to happen to me? <laughs> and so it was some, cause something I actively fought was as I tried to, against I, adopting the Texas accent. Yeah. But then, but only in my uh, adult life now am I more comfortable. Like, when, uh, here's what I find is I actually fight it a lot when I'm just trying to speak. But then when I realize I'm sacrificing saying what I want to say because I'm taking the time to think about saying it right. That's what, that's part of why on night attack, I probably uh, come uh, slide into it a lot more than uh, like, you know, like, oh y'all motherfuckers. Get, you know, what is this? Get out of here. You know, that kind of shit. I've been told that I have more of a Southern accent when I drink. I believe but that. That's you certainly a, sound more like a Floridian. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the other thing is I don't know. I've never really known how to place a Florida accent aside from understanding what would go into it. That especially where, where I'm from, it's a little bit New York, a little yeah. bit Hispanic and a little bit Southern. Like, so I know that there are elements of my speech that I can pick up from that. Right. But I don't know if, if I would say like, and he would be like, Oh, you're from Florida. Cause most people don't aren't able to I place. I don't think I could pick from. Florida out of a yeah. lineup. Although it depends on what part of Florida, because my my grandparents lived in Fort Walton Beach, which is it might as well be Georgia, right? If you're in Jacksonville, yeah. you're you might as well be Georgia. Anything anything north of uh, north of like the Orlando Tampa area is basically to the west Alabama and to the east Georgia. Like that is that is effectively where where it is more homogenous culturally I, uh, I have a half remembered fact that i that i stumbled across uh, uh across yesterday um and i'm almost certainly going to get this wrong so we'll figure out if i'm remembering it right but i think the fact was 
that Atlanta is closer to the Canadian border than it is to the tip of Florida. Does that sound right? It was a, it, yeah, well, I've driven it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I've driven I've driven from South Florida. It's nine hours to Atlanta. And I know that very well, having done Dragon Cons. Uh from Atlanta to the tip. Cause cause it, it, No, it wouldn't be. It I mean, well, now if you include the keys, so if you're going like from Key West, the southernmost tip of Florida to Atlanta, that definitely tax another, you know, keep, uh, uh, two hours onto it. And now you're getting, you're getting close. Keep, keep in mind also like Canada dips down a little bit. Yeah, I guess we could look at a map. Oh, let's do maps. It, it would have to be, I don't think that you would be able to do it from Fort Lauderdale or Miami. Like you would, it would have to be from the keys because the keys are really annoying to get in and out of, uh, cause it's literally one highway. <laughs> Well, let's see. We'll do so. Miami to Atlanta is, I guess, we'll do six hundred and sixty-four miles. Uh, what is the shortest Atlanta to? Let's let's say Cleveland, if we're going to be generous. Atlanta to Cleveland, <laughs> and then swim the rest. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think it's one of those like as the crow flies things, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Cleveland is driving 709 miles. So I don't know. That might yeah. be true. Yeah. That, Especially that, 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 if we're going, and Miami's not even down to the tip. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Much yeah, less so, the keys. Yeah, it, would, it, would, it would have to be the keys. Yeah. So here, let's do this. Duck Key to, well, uh, get, well, Key West, Key West is the, the, the final key there. Uh, or Key Largo? Montego. <laughs> Motherfucker. I got I had a tweet liked by the official good place account. I said, oh, did you? Yeah, I said uh, I said uh, uh I like people who do good things. I said somewhere is an amazing person who kept a straight face when the bride's solo dance was Kokomo, but nobody's better than somebody who ushers somebody to season three of the good place without spoiling anything. Uh <laughs> uh Key Largo, <laughs> Florida. To Atlanta, yeah, that gets to 723 miles. I think I think this is true. As the crow flies, Atlanta is physically closer because Atlanta, this straight shot, pretty much it, the distance it's, to if Cleveland. If it's as the crow flies, that's that does make sense. If especially if you go even further down the keys into uh, Key West, yeah. So Key Largo is your first major key um, when you're coming into. Coming yeah. down whatever US one. Yeah, and if we're doing if, if we are doing as the crow flies, then I I guess that's true. Wow. Nobody nobody believed that. <laughs> Doctors hate this one trick. <laughs> if you can say uh, the word Florida, then you can uh, know this one secret. Yeah, uh, man, I'll tell you what. I have you felt the desire to go to places since now you're not allowed to like leave your house and go to a restaurant that now you want to go further? No, like, no, no. I, I it's I really have, weird, man. I, I want to get the fuck out of here. It's I, I just want to go to the local restaurants. It's just that it's just that I really enjoyed. There are many places between HQ and my house. <laughs> Yeah, and I enjoy stopping at them all. <laughs> yeah, and now I can stop at none of them. Although I'll tell you what, I finally am am am, am not mad at all of those kids at the Chick Fil A because now they're all wearing masks. <laughs> and and this is my favorite COVID nineteen feud: <laughs> Brian versus the kids at the Chick Fil A. <laughs> I mean, it's like number one, they're all spread out because they, they're too busy. <laughs> and then number yeah, two, they just can't they can't do nothing right in your fucking mind. Nope. <laughs> you're like you're like, God damn it, these kids won't let me in to quietly eat my sandwich. <laughs> God damn it, these kids are all on their phones. God damn it, these kids are talking when they're not observing social distancing. <laughs> God damn it, these kids ain't wearing masks. Meryl Barr asks, you can't do pickup. I think you missed the point of stopping in between work and home. It's so that you can be physically neither at work nor at home. Yeah. 
<laughs> I don't want to minimize that time and maximize my grabbing of things in that moment. Have you thought about your first stop at the sports bar? Like what you're gonna order, what what beer you're gonna what beer Ooh. you're gonna get, what Hearthstone deck you're gonna play? God, I'll, I I I I have fantasized about that moment. Like I'm gonna walk in, and every pair of eyes I meet, there's gonna be. A smile between them, like we're all sharing a secret. I swear to God, it's gonna be twenty four. I'm just gonna have the Cheers theme in my head. I'm just gonna have it queued up just as I walk in, making your way in the world oh, today. Whiskey Wolf has got it. It's got to be wings, right? That's that's what. It, look, I'm salivating at the thought. Like like there, we, as we've discussed, there are no shitty bar wings at home. I don't care Wouldn't what you recipe like you're to saying. Get away. <sighs> Sometimes you want to go where, where you can order up some wings. <laughs> do, do, do. Uh, yeah, it's going to be good. I wonder, though, because what will happen is, is there'll be the unlocking of the place, but they'll still be stigmatized, do you think? How long till the stigma wears off? Oh, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to be early <laughs> out there. I don't give a shit. Like, I'm going to go, look. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my own frontier medicine, and I'll probably wear my little bandana, yep. you know, when I go order my drink, and then I'm gonna bring my drink to another far part of the of 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 uh, the area. It, it might be a while before I order food, but <gasps> in terms of just going, mm. getting a drink, and sitting down, oh baby, oh man, <laughs> I, I'm gonna be charging in. This is one of the other things is, uh, I don't care what the bottle says. Bottled beer ain't the same as from a tap. I ain't had a tap yeah. beer, shit, in a month. Why not had a tap beer in a month? I ain't had a tap beer in a month, dude. I ain't had a tap beer in a month. Fuck in it, a we're dog's going to Stockholm. Age. We're going to Stockholm right now. <laughs> God give a fuck damn. There. Night Attack live from Stockholm. We're doing an <laughs> album. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. I got in trouble yeah. because. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, no, I mean, no, just no. Yeah, uh, yeah, you got in trouble. Uh, talking in a southern accent and stuff made me. Uh, uh, I, I got in trouble today because I'm trying to trick Penny into watching Lonesome Dove with me, and so I'm like, yeah. just watch it a little bit, and then all of a sudden we get sucked into it. She was definitely 15 minutes late for class because <laughs> she got oh, sucked no. in. It's it's but it's wild for her to process because Lonesome Dove is an extraordinary story, but there's also. Uh, the, the way they speak of the Indians as a clear and present existential threat of savagery, yeah. um, which was 100% the way it was perceived and uh, in the lives of the people represented was a very good reason to not go to Montana <laughs> because of the yeah. savage Indians who will attack you. And then, uh, and the casual crossing of borders to steal the cattle of people in Mexico <laughs> as our heroes do. And uh, uh, I, I, I don't think I've seen a lot of, I mean, I guess all the Indian stuff is racist, but, 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 you know, you, they don't go a lot into the, the white black dynamics or the outside of the casual talking about the civil war. Um, yeah. But, uh, and then, you know, seeing teeth and, Oh, uh, a big one. I'm surprised that she hasn't bristled at, all the casual talk of, of, of whores and whorings and, and of Newt being the son of a whore and uh, uh, all that stuff. But uh, it's, a, it's a fine story. And man, it's, it's wild because those shots hold up. Like, that shit reeks of money was spent to place yeah. a film camera and run these horses right at it at sunset on location with these up-and-coming famous actors. Uh, it's... Like, there's some shots where I'm just like, today, today, that would be impressive. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I think that that's something that's, like, kind of coming back as we now have the cheap ability to do everything and we have, you know, CGI and, and the ability to paint stuff in that now that is a classic era of filmmaking where it's like, it, it, it feels cool because it feels attainable, weirdly, mm -hmm. that it's like, Oh wow, you could do this shot, but it would take effort, right? It used to take money and effort. Now it just takes effort, and that's what you revere it for.
Yeah, and also you forgive it for like uh, mismatched tones. Like you could tell the shots from earlier in the evening, but then the shots later in the evening, and then this shot clearly, you know, they're doing a day for night swap with the camera or or with the, uh, 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 you know, a giant uh, cherry picker with a floodlight or what have you. Um, you know, and, and very clearly that's just a... a Three ceramic logs over uh, a light <laughs> for, yeah. for a campfire or what have you but uh but man uh, filmmaking used to be really really hard because you you also couldn't you couldn't do it very long like every shot you you got what 15 minutes stops yeah yeah i mean it was uh you know a, a lot a lot to a lot to figure out man i guess uh, we're up on on it we're it that's it that's it man uh, I'll tell you what, that's it for happy hour today. Thank you very much for Scoop Gray, who saved yeah. happy hour. <laughs> Whoopsie doodle. Uh, and I guess uh, uh, see you guys tomorrow, huh? Yeah, man. This is, remember, it's Brian Tap Dance Day. Brian Tap Dance Thursday. Uh, oh, my God. Today's only Wednesday. I thought it was Thursday. Ugh, yeah. This is crazy. I can't, I can't even this, this world. On a scale to one to even, I just can't. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for being a happy hour. Enjoy your tapped bottles. 